Yeah, thank you for the introduction. And I'd like to thank uh, Sukun and uh, Sukun for and the other organizers uh, for having me in this nice conference. So today I will talk about our recent works on topological spin textures in chiral magnets, uh, but to, with a focus on three dimensions. A three dimensional spin texture is our main interest uh, recently. Mm, before I start, yeah, I'd like to give a brief introduction of our university. Okay, so our University of New Hampshire is named after uh, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, the, uh, this is one, one state in uh, the United States. So this is the map of United States in this northeastern corner in the so-called uh, New England area, where the earliest uh, pilgrims landed in. Uh, and so you probably recognize some states or even some cities like Massachusetts here and Boston is here and our university is in this uh, triangular state along the coast. And so our state is uh, famous for its motto, which is uh, live free or die. It's uh, of vital importance. Uh, uh, under a um, uh, pandemic right now. Okay. And we are also famous uh, for the beautiful landscape during foliage season, all leaves turns red. And, but uh, we have a terrible uh, heavy snow in the winter. Okay. But uh, if you like uh, skiing, so probably this is uh, good news. Yeah, if you are around, just let me know, okay? I, we can, we can. Uh, uh, have uh, some activities and uh, uh, give us talk. Uh, so this is the outline of my talk. I will start with a relatively comprehensive introduction of Skirmios uh, because I don't know whether any uh, earlier uh, speakers has covered uh, the, uh, this part. Okay. Uh, and then I will talk about uh, mm, the Skirmion family. Uh, so these are a series of spin textures intimately related to Skirmion. Uh, then we'll switch gear to a three, real three-dimensional topological texture. I will tell you what does it mean by real. Okay. Yeah, so Skirmion is a topological spin texture and the topology of mechanism can be or uh, 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 trace back to the topology of a magnetic ring. Okay? If we enforce our spins line in plane, there will be two spin configurations. One is the spin polarized on the left, and the other is the vortex state uh, in which the spins are fanning out. Uh, so if you want to transfer from the vortex state to the spin polarized state, you will keep this north spin unchanged, and you will rotate uh, this spin, okay? Uh, counterclockwise by, by 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 some some small small number of angle, then this rotation angle keep going so on so forth and yeah and immediately you will see that the spin to the left of the north pole rotate by an angle of two pi while the one to the right rotate by infinitesimal angle, so the rotation angle is not continuous across the north pole so there is actually no continuous transformation between these two configurations. This indicates the topological in, uh, uh, the, uh, difference. And this can be generalized to the starting of a magnetic sphere. In this case, the spin can point in any direction in three dimensions. Again, two topologically inequivalent configurations, spin polarized and the hydrochloric state. Right? So yeah, hydrochloric state still has this fan out configuration. This hydrochloric state is actually the precursor of a Skirmion configuration, right? Uh, they share this uh, quite, uh, quite close enough manifold. Right? So one is compact, but the other is extended right? uh, in 2D. Right? So their relation can be characterized by the so-called stereographic uh, projection. So what you need to do is just to put this uh, hedgehog a unisphere on top of a, of the 2D plane. Then for any point P prime on the plane, you draw a line connect to the North Pole. Then this line would, uh, like here, okay? This line would uh, 
intersect with the union sphere at point P. Then you give the spin con spin a uh, hedgehog spin at point P, which is in the radial direction, okay, to the point P prime. As if you put a bulb here in the North Pole and project out this hedgehog onto the 2D plane, and you will get is a scramion, okay, on the 2D. And yeah, the next speaker, Guo Chang, will talk extensively about this type of skirmion, uh, the so called neotype skirmion realized in magnetic multi layers. And I will mostly talk about this okay, uh, so called block type of skirmion. Okay? So they are related by a rotation of all spins about the axis by angle of 90 degrees. Okay. Mm. Topological index, average topological configuration should have a topological index. Uh, let's still come uh, start from uh, the vortex. Okay? So vortex, uh, there are different types of vortex and they're just the characterized by the number of angles, a number of uh, spin rotations uh, while traversing the vortex. Like here, the spin rotated by angle of two pi, well, for this configuration, the angle rotate by a, uh, the spin rotate by angle of minus two pi. Right. Okay? So the spin rotation in unit of two pi is the topological index of the vortex, or sometimes we call it a winding number. And this mathematically okay, can be compact, compactly written in terms of this uh, equation. Right. So it's just the the total derivative of the uh, angle theta okay, in unit of two pi. Then for the vor, uh, for the uh, hedgehog, you do the same thing, right? And this total derivative of theta will be uh, replaced by the total derivative of the solid angle, uh, since the total solid angle has four pi, so it will be returning in unit of four pi. You still get an in, uh, uh, integer value. Um, yeah, but okay, so this solid angle, the measure of solid angle, you can return in terms of the polar and the azimuthal angle of the in the co moving uh, frame, right? And in particular, this scrimia okay, has this polar and the uh, uh, and the azimuthal angle okay, as a function of x and y, the coordinate, okay. Then you do the variable substitution, play with the Jacobian, eventually you will get the topological charge density. Right? And in the unit vector, uh, uh, point by point, then you plug in the Skirman conversion, do the integral, and you will see that this always gives you integer value. And we can take a closer look of the topological ch chart definition. Okay? Actually, it to can be also written in terms of the product of the winding number and, uh, and the uh, the polarity. Okay? So the winding number is the same as we defined for the vortex and the 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 the, the spin the in plane spin rotation while circulating the scrimia. Okay? Of course, in unit of two pi and the polarity okay, is the difference between the Z component of spin as uh, is the, the the difference of the Z component of spin between the one in at the center and the one at the peripheral. Okay. So usually as later you will see that the central spin is always anti-parallel with the external magnetic field. Okay. So by convention, this polarity is uh, minus one. So as a result, the topological charge for each scramia by convention is minus one as well. And scramia was uh, first uh, experimentally uh, discovered in magnesium silicide. And so this is the unit cell of magnesium silicide. Red bars stand for uh, magnesium and blue bars for silicon. So if you perform the inversion with respect to the center, and you will see that 
the red and blue bars are exchanged. And no matter how you translate the whole lattice, there's no way to coincide with each other. So as a result, okay, uh, in addition to the, the usual Fermat Heisenberg exchange between neighboring spins, there is a new term, everyone knows uh, the Joseph Scamalia interaction. Okay. And the first term, okay, the Heisenberg promotes the parallel spin congregation and the DM interaction, like to have neighboring spins perpendicular to each other. As a result of their competition, neighboring spins form a small but non zero angle with respect to each other. And the angle is given by the ratio, uh, the ratio between the DM interaction and the Heisenberg exchange. So this is the case so if we have just a pair of neighboring spins. If we have an array of spins, this rotation angle will accumulate and end up with this helical state. If you apply a very large, a, 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 you apply magnetic field, uh, if the field is large, of course, the all spin polarized. And if the field is moderate, you will have chance to get the conical state in between these two extreme limits. Okay. So in conical state, the spins are rotating on the cone surfaces. So this is the phase diagram of magnetic silicide. Okay. Horizontal axis, the temperature vertical axis is the magnetic field. And the system undergoes successive transition from helical to conical to the spin polarized state. But here at finite temperature, there is a uh, a phase and it has been known since 1970s. It is uh, so that time mm, we really don't know what, what this phase is okay? until 2009. Uh, Christian uh, Flader group from uh, Technische uh, Universität of uh, München okay? they found they use the uh, small angle neutron scattering and confirm that uh, it's uh, hexagonal pattern in the reciprocal space. And this can be only explained in terms of triangle lattice of the skirmia. And this was further confirmed in terms of real space, uh, uh, real space magnetic imaging, okay? uh, Lawrence uh, TM, Lawrence Transmission Electron Microscope okay? from Takura Group. Uh, so each round object is a skirmish and they truly close packed into a triangle lattice. And after that, uh, there were a series of materializations, not only b compound, right, the material similar to manganese, uh, uh, like iron germanium, copper selenium oxide, right, the, the bulk materials. Uh, there are also a series of magnetic multi layers okay, due to the interfacial DM interaction. There will be squirmules as well. Okay. So, I have participated in some review papers, and if you're interesting, you can just uh, look into them, and there will be some summaries of materials there. Okay. And a final piece of the introduction is the dynamics. Okay. And squirmule really has uh, very, very interesting dynamics. And the magnet, the Dynamics of magnetization can be well characterized by the landau lifshitz gilbert equation. Okay. Uh, so this alpha is the Gilbert damping. Okay. Um, beta is uh, the uh, non-adiabatic spin transfer torque. Okay. So adiabatic spin transfer torque uh, is characterized by this term, and this U is is defined in this way and okay? some some something like uh, the uh, electron velocity but uh, not quite um now under the current right under the current the scrumion would move collectively and to describe this collective motion of the scrumion uh, we like to introduce the collective coordinate r okay so this r and describes the displacement of the scrumion so with this substitution, the the, uh, the terms like a dm over dt okay, can be written in terms of the dr over dt, which is the velocity of the skirmia. So as a result, after some manipulations, you will get uh, this equation motion, the so-called Tila equation motion. Okay. And this well describes the dynamics 
of full square mass. Okay, so they were it can be grouped into two terms. Okay, so the first is the gyrotropic term. This G is a vector along Z direction with the amplitude of two pi times the topological charge. And this two term both describe the dissipation. And any other term can be characterized by this phenomenological force term. Um, looking to this term, uh, we immediately see that the second dissipative term usually is very small. Okay, beta and alpha are usually very small value. So we can use this as a uh, uh, some perturbation. Okay? So this first term dominate. Okay? Forget about force for the time being. Okay? The first term dominate, and eventually, uh, so you immediately get two consequences. First, the velocity of the skirmion is almost the same as you. Right? So it's given by this one. And if we include this term, then we'll see that this velocity, the skirmion has a transverse velocity proportional to difference between alpha and beta. Also, more importantly, it is proportional to the topological charge. Okay. And this is uh, our recent uh, collaboration with the experimental group uh, um, uh, from uh, high, high, magnet, uh, high magnet field laboratory uh, of China. Uh, we were working on this copper magnet zinc, a room temperature skirmion material. And after uh, a series of electron powers has been applied, the skirmion moves collectively. And, and you can clearly see that, the, sorry, the current is applied along X direction, but you can clearly see the skirmion acquires a velocity in the Y direction. Okay. Mm, this is actually the first, uh, uh, ex, uh, one of the first experimental observation of the skirmion motion, clear skirmion motion uh, in uh, bulk chiromagnets. So if we summarize the trajectory in uh, by this snapshot, okay, if you look into column A and C, uh, they have the same current, same current direction, okay, but opposite topological charge due to opposite magnetization, and they truly have opposite uh, uh, transverse velocity as described by this equation. So now I will talk about uh, the Skirmion family. Uh, so there is a early uh, theoretical prediction of Skirmion uh, written by Bogdanov. Okay. And in that paper, he not only predicted the conventional Skirmion, but also a configuration called Skirmionium, in which the spin rotate from center to the peripheral by angle of two pi. Okay in contrast to a rotation of pi in conventional skirmia. So if we use the color plot to represent the in-plane uh, configuration, uh, in-plane in direction of the magnetization, the skirmion will be represented by this colorful disk, okay? and this skirmionium will be something like that, okay? uh, as a conventional skirmion disk wrapped by a circle of helical stripe. Mm. There are two ways to realize this uh, uh, skirmionium configuration uh, as we developed. The first one is uh, the uh, geometrical confinement. Right? What do you need to do is just to synthesis a nano disk, iron germanium nano disk with a finite thickness. Right? So this is our simulation, and, and this is the. Uh, 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 Anatomy of the the configuration in three D. Yeah, you can really see it's a skirmionium configuration. Um, yes, and we also confirm that uh, this configuration is uh, a ground state right, at uh, zero field. Okay, since there is no external field, uh, there will be two configurations share the, sharing the same energy. Right? They, they are just uh, time reversal partner to each other. Magnetization is exactly opposite with each other. And this is also 
this as this confirmed experimentally that there were two configurations with opposite polarization discovered uh, in this work okay. and one can actually switch from one configuration to one type of uh, uh, scramionium to the other okay. so what you need to do is just to start with one scramionium okay. then you gradually turn on the field okay. you see that this is scramionium is completely detached from the boundary then you further increase the magnetic field. The scramionium will collapse to a conventional uh, scramium. Okay? So this is a movie. Okay? The, this is the lateral view. You can see that there is a pair of monopole and anti-monopole okay, block point okay, uh, that are uh, created. And these two, uh, two block points are pushed towards two opposite uh, surfaces. Okay? Then you gradually turn off the field you will end up with a scramionium of opposite polarization. And this is also experimentally uh, confirmed. Right. And recently, okay, we, act, uh, we uh, developed like, another uh, path okay, towards the scramionium. Okay. So again, if we see this uh, circulating helical stripe as a bag containing a conventional scramion, okay, so this bag should be able to contain more scramions okay, uh, 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 within. Okay? Like here, there are six scramions. Okay? So each scramion has a topological charge of, five, uh, of one. Okay? And this, this helical stripe has actually the opposite topological charge. So as a result for this configuration, it will be six okay, minus one. And this has the topological charge of five. Uh, but the question is how to get this uh, uh, state. Okay, we call it a scramion bundle state, and the scramions are uh, um, wrapped by um, uh, uh, by this uh, uh, helical stripe tie. Okay, so the way out is to play with the non-equilibrium state. Okay? Uh, this is the simulation. Okay? Uh, what we do is to grab to apply a field in the minus z direction okay then gradually turn the field cool down a lo lo lower the temperature okay and in this case okay, we will eventually end up with a helical state but this is not a, heat a perfect helical state okay? there are still some defects uh scramion defects okay? but since the uh, the field was originally applied in the minus z direction these remaining skirmions will have the central polarization up. Okay. Then a field is a positive field is gradually turned on. Okay. Skirmion with the central magnetization up is not stable. Helical is not stable under the larger field either. Okay. And most of them will be annihilated. But uh, some of the skirmions, okay, happen to be wrapped by this helical and the get stabilized. Okay. And these are the scramion bundles, uh, bundle state uh, uh, that we introduced in this work. Okay. So this is again the experimental club, uh, um, experimental observation uh, by Haifeng Du, okay. very beautiful magnetic image okay. uh, seeing the scramion bundle. But I have to confess that uh, the number of scramions in the bundle is random. Sometimes we get a bundle with a bunch of scramions. Okay? But the point is, if you apply a further increase the magnetic field, okay, no matter what the number of scramions you start with, the bundle undergoes the cascading transition and the scramions inside will be annihilated one by one. Okay? Eventually, you end up with this uh, scramionium state. Again, the same physics, if you further increase the magnetic field, this scramionium state will collapse to a conventional scramion. And this is the dynamics uh, as the snapshot. Again, there is a scramion Hall effect. But uh, interestingly, for scramionium, due to the vanishing, uh, vanishing topological charge, uh, the 
uh, it uh, doesn't have the transverse velocity, it just moves straight along the current. Okay. And there is actually very interesting three-dimensional nature of this uh, Scrumian bundle state. Okay, so in the interior, it's exactly what we uh, expect as uh, just the Scrumians wrapped by this uh, helical stripe, but uh, on the surface, okay, you will see that uh, these uh, Scrumians are melted and end up with this chiral vortex state. Okay, but now this equation comes into play for this chiral vortex state. The winding, uh, the polarity is one, and the winding is five, and the topological charge is five. So the topological charge is the same layer by layer okay, throughout the whole bundle. And three dimensional, uh, 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 three dimensional uh, feature of the mm, topological configuration uh, is actually everywhere. In other uh, in, uh, in other systems, like in this work, uh, uh, collaborating with the Takura group, uh, we looked into a uh, iron Romanian nanotouch region. Uh, so this is the case with the sample size one uh, one hundred ten nanometer. Uh, the, the 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 edge uh, edge uh, uh, lens. Uh. And this is the TM, and this is electron holography measurement. And we did a uh, uh, tremendous amount of uh, micromagnet simulation in three dimensions and confirmed this Scrumion tube state is what experimentally uh, measured. Uh, interestingly, uh, this Scrumion tube uh, start from the center of the bottom edge and uh, end up with the opposite edge, the center of the opposite edge. Okay. So why the scrubium tube is uh, a building in this uh, direction? Okay. So the physics is uh, the fractional vortex. Okay. Uh, the, there is a very beautiful paper by Oleg Chandrashev. I, I, I believe he gave a presentation this morning. Okay. So he started a, a nano ribbon, right? and at the edge there is a, a easy access and a sort of right? and there is two interesting solutions for this uh, Ham, uh, Hamiltonian functional, right? the fractional vortex in which the spin rotated by an angle of pi from left to right, right? or minus pi in this case. Right? Now. Back to our case, right? if we uh, focusing on a two-dimensional uh, chiromagnet sheet, right? due to the missing spin outside the sheet, uh, right? the, at the boundary, the spin is circulating. Right? This is also a state to uh, uh, minimize the dipole interaction okay? head to tail. Now, if we fold this uh, two-dimensional sheet, okay, and uh, the left part okay, has the circulating congregation, and the right part has the, again the circulating. Okay. Now, at the folding edge, okay, the spin has frustration. Okay. It doesn't know where to point to, okay. and as a result, okay, uh, the, as it, it takes compromise, okay, have spins pointing in one direction has been pointing in the opposite direction. And at the center, there is a vortex, a fractional vortex state. Okay. So back to this uh, tetrahedron. Okay. So if you focus on this green triangle, okay, the bottom edge is the folding edge of the two neighboring surfaces. Okay. As a result, there is a fractional vortex. And if you look into this blue triangle, okay, and again, form a uh, fractional vortex in the center. Okay, and uh, these two fractions, a spin pointing down, okay, a uh, channel, okay, is connecting these uh, two fractional vortices, and this channel provide the backbone of the uh, this uh, square tube. Okay. And by in by varying the uh, 
the 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 size of the tetrahedron okay you can expect uh, different configurations uh, once the size is very large and mainly it's a helical state uh, pointing all kinds of direction but in between okay like here there will be a it will be a configuration with the three squamous tubes yeah. but uh, they these squamous still originate from the edge rather than the surface Okay, so uh, now I'll talk about the three-dimensional topological spin textures. Yeah. And the question we are asking ourselves is whether we can get a truly three-dimensional topological spin texture. Okay. So your, your immediate response may be this hedgehog state that I introduced at the very beginning, okay? But this hedgehog state has a singularity at the center, okay? So this is in analogy to the vortex state in 2D, okay? And we call these defect states, okay? And by texture, I mean a configuration like Scrumion that is free of singularity, right? A te texture in 3D, yeah, the, uh, the Hoffian uh, state. So this Hoffian state, uh, this is a is a, a typical uh, Hoffian state. Uh, it's a three dimensional distribution of the magnetization. Uh, very complicated. Uh, the property is along this central axis, all the spins pointing in the z direction, uh, and at the peripheral, all spins pointing in the binary, uh, 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 also are pointing in the z direction. Uh, and along this large loop. Okay. All the spins are pointing in minus z direction. Okay. And then all the spins with zero z component form a torus plane, okay. like uh, here. Okay. Mm, since it's a texture, no singularity, if you trace all spin, location of all spins pointing in the same direction, same fixed direction, okay, they will form a closed loop. Okay. And this closed loop, we call it a pre image. Like this blue loop is a preimage of all spins pointing in this direction, and red is another preimage with spin pointing in the in another direction, and you will see that no matter what pair of two direction you choose, they are always linked by the same number. Right? So this linking number is the topological index of Hoffy. And if you take a series of cross sections of this torus plane, you will get a series of scramions with uh, uh, different helicities. Right? And in particular, this right one is a new type scramion, and left one is a uh, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, this is new type scramion, and left one is a uh, anti scramion. Right? And there's there was actually intimate relation between scramion and uh, the Hoffman. Okay? So if we twist this scramion tube, uh, oops, uh, animation, okay. by you twist it by angle of two pi, then you connect two ends, and you will get a Hoffian configuration. Okay. And mathematically, uh, uh, the relation between scramion and uh, the Hoffian can be built by the stereographer projection. Okay. So this is the equation for the stereographic projection x, y, the coordinate on the plane, okay. and n1, n3, n2, n3 are the uh, spin configuration. This, this is a scrum, yeah? okay. So for this is a map from uh, R2 to S2. Okay. And if you do the same thing for Hoffian, okay, you can map, you, you just, uh, I mean, uh, generalize into one dimension or higher. Okay. You can map a point in 3D, okay, to a point on the unit sphere in 4D. Okay? You just uh, copy the first term, the second term, the third term, and then you make up this uh, a term depending on Z. Okay? But this is a point on the unit sphere in 4D, and how to map it to a spin. Okay? And the way out is this uh, is quantum mechanics actually, okay, uh, intimately related. Uh, so you use these four numbers right, to construct a spin node. Then you take uh, the 
uh, expectation value uh, with respect to poly matrices. Okay, you get a, a Hopkin conversion. Topological charge can be uh, imitated uh, uh, in the same way as okay? so this is the topological charge of Scramia and Epsilon are total anti-symmetric tensors. Okay? Then you just uh, okay, use this Psi to write down the same topological charge okay, for the half. Okay? And sometimes we write this term in terms of integral of you, this uh, this integral we call it emergent magnetic field. Okay? And this one can be written as the product of the emergent magnetic field and any vector potential associated to that. Okay? And this definition is the same as the linking number. Uh, so we tried to realize this uh, Hopian configuration uh, for many years, but failed. Okay, but uh, uh, accidentally, um, uh, my student took a cross a, a uh, cross section of the X Y plane of this torus plane, and uh, we immediately see that it's nothing but a uh, Scramionian state. Right. Uh, so now we have idea. Right? That means if we polarize the magnetization of the scramion away from the center, right? we will probably have decent chance to get a Hopkin. And our prediction is to have this chiromagnet nano disk. And right? we know that there will be a scramionium. Right? We put it in between two spin polarized layers. Right? And we did some simulation and confirmed that there is a stable. Hopian configuration. Okay. And this is the lateral cross section. Uh, there's a truly a pair of scramia and anti scramia okay. per images of two directions, like uh, x and minus x direction, they are linked to each other, and all spins with zero z component form a torus plane as expected. Okay. And this prediction is recently experimental confirmed by Peter Fisher group. Right? Although they choose a different approach by stacking, uh, as by different uh, stacking sequences of magnetic multi-layers, uh, the physics is still the same. Uh, so how, how much time do I have? Uh, you, you, you mute it. I sorry, I cannot hear you. This is weird. Oh, you have yeah. uh, two minutes left. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll probably flash through uh, the discussion of the Hoffman dynamics. Uh, basically, yeah, we also uh, stabilize this Hoffman in a a a up to fourth order uh, spin spin exchange model. Uh, by playing with these uh, four parameters, we get a stable Hoffian. Then if we apply few, uh, a current, uh, uh, this Hoffian uh, moves, uh, but uh, while it moves, it, uh, similar as the Scramia, it will acquire a transverse velocity. Uh, on top of that, the torus plane of the Hoffian would uh, rotate. Uh, and this rotation angle transverse uh, how uh, transverse velocity will depend on the relative uh, strength of the uh, this uh, non adiabatic tor uh, torque and the Gilbert damping term. Okay. Uh, yeah, in a very special case with beta equals to alpha, you see from this movie that this Hopkin just uh, moves uh, straight ahead okay, without any rotation and the uh, uh, Hall effect. Okay. And this can be modeled uh, in terms of the collective coordinate as well. Right? So the physics, okay, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, talk about the key physics. Right? Uh, so what we do is, okay, so write the, the, man, the magnetizing to dynamics, time dependent dynamics, okay, in terms of this collective coordinate, R is the displacement of the scrumium 
And this O, you return in terms of this uh, angular momentum, I guess this theta would be the rotation angle of the puffing, right? So you plug in this into the spin barrier phase, you, you will see that right, the displacement are in uh, displacement and the rotations, they are entangled, right? they're coupled to each other. Right? And for Hoffian, right, this Q is the topological charge, still the topological charge defined in 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 in, 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 in two dimensions. This Q is zero. Yeah, Q is zero for uh, for Hoffian. Uh, but right, still due to the coupling between the rotation and displacement, uh, the Hoffian would acquire a whole uh, velocity. Right? So this is the uh, the, 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 the key physics here. Right? And there's also some uh, equation motion uh, uh, description, but I will skip that. Okay, so I'll just uh, come to the conclusion uh yeah so i want to convince you that uh, the skirmia has some rich dynamics and rich physics uh, to be explored especially its generalization into three dimensions so will be very interesting and there is uh, intensive uh, uh ongoing uh work on hoffian uh after our first uh, uh prediction uh of magnet hoffian in uh the synthetic uh, system uh, so I like to acknowledge a group of people that participated in these works, especially to uh, Ijo Liu. Okay, so he is actually from uh, UC Riverside, but he worked with me uh, in, in, in when he was a graduate student. And he, yeah, I think Guo Chang will also uh, talk about uh, his beautiful work uh, when he was a postdoc in in Guochang's group, but right now he's in Rican. Uh, most uh, experimental uh, work was done by Hai Feng Du from uh, Chinese Academy of Science. He's doing beautiful magnetic images. Okay, and this work has been supported by uh, Depar U.S. Department of uh, Energy uh, continuously and strongly. Okay, so with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for a very beautiful uh, talk. Then now is uh, open for the questions. So, is there any questions from audience? Yeah, for the time being, actually, I have a, uh, questions. Yeah. So, yeah, this is very interesting. The uh, since you uh, generate the. Uh, Q equal five, six, or <laughs> multi uh, numbers uh, systems, then yes. is there uh, any way to control that, uh, that uh, multi uh, yeah, uh, yeah, entity? Yeah it's, yeah, it's actually completely, uh, completely random. Uh, so you, you're talking about this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, then if you in, increase the field, I, like here, you see the topological charge right, or number of scramions inside, uh, just to change one by one. Sure, yeah, but uh, seems like uh, this is kind of a high order effect, something like this. So seems like uh, it's not easy to uh, get some um, multi uh, Q values at once. Uh, yeah, this kind right, of right, some right. Yeah, this is yeah, high order <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, this processes, is not, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're right because this is uh, non equilibrium state, and yeah. uh, uh, there is no knob to to uh, find find control the the number of the initial uh, skirmishes. Okay. Uh, so, yep. Uh, second game. Yep. Please. Uh, yeah. Give us uh, your question. Yep. Uh, yeah, thanks for the nice talk, Jadong. Uh, so in the so so this dynamics of Hopkins is very interesting. Uh, so in the equation of motion uh, of this of the Hopkins, so yeah, in the collective coordinate, yeah, yes. Maybe before that, so you, you the Q is zero. 
of course. Yes, uh, yes. So this is work. just the analysis of the spin barrel phase. Yeah, what a physical, uh, yeah, what a physical, for example, Q, X, Y, that is like Lorentz force, right? Yes. Uh, but what are these uh, two other forces? How can you understand them? Yes, yeah, so. Terms of, uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so actually, I actually, okay, so this is the uh, uh, kind of the, the beauty of uh, this hopping. And so in Scrumian case, we know that uh, this Q uh, plays a significant role in many, many things like the Scrumian uh, Hall effect, uh, like the topological Hall effect. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, so this D and I okay, controls uh, the property of the, uh, the Hopfian. Yeah. And this D and I, okay, if we look into their definitions, okay, the D is the first order moment of the topological charge yes and so this is the topological charge uh, multiplied by x and okay? then this is the topological charge multiplied by a quadratic function of okay? this is second order moment and uh, we recently seen that uh, again through the 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 the, the transport uh, analysis the physics of hoffian will be controlled by the moment of the topological charge and not exactly the topological charge, not exactly the half topological index, but this moment. Yeah, yeah so this but, kind of what, two okay. rotations, <laughs> they're just, just linked, okay? So this is the moment of inertial, but it's anisotropic. It has off diagonal term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this second term relates the uh, in Internal yeah, rotation. Yeah, second term is the most and interesting. This, yes. Yeah, and this uh, uh, translation motion. Well, would there be any other physical analogs of the second uh, second term? Yeah, I should. Yeah, I should have thought if about. We put, for example, yeah, but, yeah, if we put like uh, uh, some rigid body, three dimensional rigid body in a uh, in a liquid, and if we, if we apply magnetic field to that liquid. Would, would the dynamics of that rigid body have that kind of a term in the equation of motion? So that, yeah, that would be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so we also use this one to write down the two equation motions. And uh, maybe, this uh, term maybe, will be related uh, to, to like uh, this term here. So yeah, the velocity and the, the angular velocity, they are they are linked. Maybe it has something to do with this is coming uh, not coming charge. Maybe it has something to do with this uh, BX, uh, a special distribution of BX, BY, BZ inside the hot films. Maybe it has something to do with that. Uh, maybe I don't not, know. maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we, we can look into that. Yeah, so the the Hoffian is still in its uh, 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 yeah in, in emphasis. There are a lot of interesting mm -hmm. things that can be explored. Yes, actually, we have a, one more question from uh, Professor Yu. Hey, thank you. So, uh, Jiajun, a very nice talk. Thanks for the talk. Thank you. And I have a very quick general question. Um, I'm also very interested in this three dimensional uh, spin texture. But mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I think the whole thing is very hard for us to realize. But the three-dimensional skirming is, is quite possible for us. Uh, can you let me know uh, what for experimentalist what uh, we can do in the future uh, using this kind of three-dimensional uh, spin textures? Uh, this, this, this is a very difficult question. <laughs> Yeah, so I will comment about this Hoffian first. Okay, so yeah, Hoffian is this synthetic layer uh, is definitely very very challenging, uh, and our hope is still to find a model, right, or even the material, uh, in which uh, the Hoffian is the ground state. Uh, I know it's very challenging, but uh, uh, worth, still worth trying. Uh, for Scrumians. Uh, 
uh, three dimensions, okay, experimentally, I would say that there is a very important thing hasn't been uh, fully pursued. Okay? That is the three-dimensional magnet image, three-dimensional magnetization, magnetic reconstruction. Okay? So right now there is a version in terms of X-ray, okay? but X-ray has a problem. X-ray is not a very, it's not a direct image. Okay, X-ray just to give you some some uh, histogram contrast in on the screen. Okay, you cannot see from your naked face and uh, the naked eyes what it is. Okay? and you need to go to test many many states, calculate their face, then you compare with the face and say, okay, so this is likely. The, the most uh, possible uh, configuration. Okay. Is there a way, I, will, I think, uh, yeah, it's very important to develop a strategy to image magnetizations distribution in three dimensions. Okay. Yeah, so recently we are doing some something, uh, some algorithm development in terms of electron holography. Okay. Electron uh, TM, okay. it's, it's a real, uh, space image, direct image. Okay, so and also it's, uh, it has a very uh, high uh, spatial resolution. Okay, so I will give. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll I'll leave this challenge to you, experimental guys. Thank you for your yeah. Presentation. Okay. Uh, since time's up. Uh, uh, let's let's thank the speaker again. Yeah, thank you for the uh, beautiful talk.